You know, I feel that I come from another part of the world. The discussion so far, I was here all of yesterday, and all the presentations were particularly useful to me to take home. Um, and I feel that it is right for me to follow the first three speakers, because what I th as I listened yesterday and today, I feel what I want to do is represent the other parts of the world, outside Europe and outside North America. What is really happening in our parts of the world? Now, all three stories that you've heard has a story that relates to what happens outside. Ground zero for me, for Hong Kong, to go on the path that we have gone is the 2006 LA and Long Beach clean air plan. When we noticed in Hong Kong what they were doing there, and we looked at why they did it. They did it as a response because an NGO was going to sue them. The port was going to be sued because people living around the port of Long Beach were complaining about the potential health problems. I think quite rightly, the ports came together and created what was at that time the leading green port plan. I personally read the health reports that was put together. And of course, having been to Los Angeles, for us coming from Asia, particularly from China, there are no people there. Very few people compare to the people that we have. Secondly is the people who live around the ports are actually quite far away. But when you come to Asia, when you come to Hong Kong, where I live, they are right next to the emissions from the ports. So my conclusion, firstly, is, well, actually, a lot more of our own citizens are at risk. Now, this shows you a little bit about understanding the science. And the point I want to make here is, there are many port cities in the developing world. We don't know yet, because we haven't done the science, of what is the impact not just in the health terms, we hardly know what is the contribution from ships. In Hong Kong, when we, the government finally did an emissions inventory of the contribution from ships, everybody was shocked. That because we focused on power plants first, like every other city, we've cleaned up power plants, we've cleaned up the coal plants. So today, in Hong Kong, Shipping emissions is the leading polluter. As you can see, 50% of our sulfur comes from ships. That shocked everybody. But the point I want to make and impress upon you is many ports around the world, including the ones in China, many of them have not done this yet. So the first thing we need to do is to understand what is the magnitude of the contribution from ships. Now, the second thing I want to share with you, because we've talked about it so much here, is talking to each other, dialogue and collaboration. If you haven't heard about something called the Fair Winds Charter, do go online and look it up. And if anybody wants to give a prize to environmental performance in the shipping and maritime sector, give it to this Fair Winds Charter. What happened in Hong Kong was, actually, an NGO brought together the shipping sectors, the port people, the shipping companies, and asked them to consider the evidence, the health threats to the people of Hong Kong, and whether they were willing to do something, looking at what's being done in the US, and then increasingly some of the actions, and we're talking about 10 years ago, what was beginning to happen also in Europe. After talking for about two and a half to three years, one day in the room, and I had the privilege to be present in that room, the shipping companies were there, some of the terminals were there, and a number of civil servants, as well as uh, an NGO that was trying to push this forward. 
one gentleman put his hand up, from Maersk, actually, and said, should we try and look at a voluntary plan? What they wanted to do was to say, well, what are we prepared to do in the industry? So what came about was the first Fairwinds Charter from 2011 to the end of 2012. So that's a two-year period. 17 companies, large shipping companies, came together. Many of them were not home port in Hong Kong. So this is really a global, uh, a, a global effort. They came together and said, we will fund when our ships come in, we'll few switch at birth. Now, you might say, well, this is only one of many measures. But actually, this is what the shipping companies could do themselves, and they knew how to do it. So this Fairwinds Charter is now quite famous, and actually, they have renewed it two years at a time for a number of years. So I'm showing here the three iterations of the Fairwinds Charter. The Fairwinds Charter said another thing. They asked the government to regulate. And this is the first. First time, the shipping company said, if we did it voluntarily, there will always be companies that wouldn't be willing to do it. So if we wanted a level playing field, we want legislation. The third thing that it asked the government to do is to see if it was possible for us to talk to our neighbor port in Guangdong province. Because they knew that if the region was all willing to do this, then there was no discussion about competitive advantages and disadvantages. Because if they have to switch fuels in Hong Kong, it was going to be a bit more expensive. So would the ships then go to Shenzhen, our sister port across the border? So this is very, very famous. Well, the good news is the government has now passed that legislation. In fact, the government passed two pieces of legislation. Last year, we passed a piece of legislation where the fuel, the marine fuel that you can buy in Hong Kong, is a much cleaner fuel. The second thing we did, and we passed that piece of legislation uh, in March this year, is to require all ocean-going vessels when they berth in Hong Kong to switch fuels from the 1st of July this year. And Hong Kong couldn't have done this without first the shipping companies coming together with the Fairwinds Charter. And I just want to make a point here by saying that having been a witness and a participant in that dialogue session, the whole thing actually took five years. When we talk about dialogue with each other, it is actually quite difficult because you have to bring quite a number of people round the table together. You have to structure those dialogue. You have to um, sustain that dialogue when people are very busy. So port authorities, obviously, you're in a very special position because you can command that. Not every port sitting around the world is necessarily able to have the right governance structure for that to happen. We don't have it in Hong Kong because there's no Port Authority. But what I'm saying is, it is possible, but never underestimate the time and effort it takes to structure those discussions. This is my last point. What's next? Now, for California and for Europe, you're going a long way on many, many things. And we're just doing two things, mandating cleaner fuel and doing fuel switching at port. But as I said, it's taken us five years to get here. Now, our next point is to go into our region, into our neighborhood, covering Guangdong province. Now, in case you're not familiar with the geography, Hong Kong is the bit here. Shenzhen is actually really close to Hong Kong. I can walk there. And then the port of Guangzhou, is further away, I can't walk there, but as a body of water, we were to compare it to um, California. This whole area here, it's about the size of the San Francisco Bay Area. So it's very small. But in traffic terms, just in container traffic, the port of Hong Kong, the port of Shenzhen, the port of Guangzhou, 
carries about 12% of world tonnage of containers. It's huge. It is huge. There's a lot of logistics activity here. There's a lot of shipping activities here. This whole area that you're looking at, just this small area, has 60 million people. So it is critical, critical for us to get on the path that Long Beach and Los Angeles is on, and also what you're doing here in Europe. The last point I want to make is the stimulation for where we are today has come from somewhere else in the world. You're the ones that have the eekers and the seekers. We want to be doing that too. So our longer term, well, longer term, hopefully we mean a few years, huh? our longer term aim is for this, the waters of this whole area in China to become a eker area. We look forward to uh, actually learning or continuing to learn from you. The inspiration and the efforts that you're making in Europe and in California, that is what we're looking at. What you're doing in terms of the ports getting together to be able to speak to each other. I mean, we all talked about ports and industry, shippings and cruises all getting together. What are we going to talk about if we can Imagine structuring those discussions that has as a core component the bit about efficiency, about health of the people, the sustainability, right? It's about economics, it's about people, and it's about health and environment. The Port of Hong Kong, we look forward to being on this journey with you, and thank you for including me and giving me a last word. <laughs>